cold showers, plunges, cold exposures are all things that are growing in popularity at the moment in the health world. And I've learned a lot about cold exposure and the benefits that this can have to our health in the last couple of months. And I got to a point where I thought, how can I not try this? Now, just to be clear, I'm somebody that really suffers with the cold. I feel like I get cold really easily. If we go to the sea, if there's a group of 10 of us, I'll often be the first one to leave because I just get too cold. Whenever I tried to take a cold shower in a few years ago, I would struggle to get my breath under control and I was under the illusion that this is not for me. But after discovering such huge benefits to doing this, I thought I've got to give this a try. And so I did, and so I started about three weeks ago now. And so in this video, I'm gonna uh, show you my experience. I'm gonna show you some of the benefits that I've got personally, and I'm gonna go through the top six benefits that have been proven um, to get when you expose yourself to the cold on a regular basis. And I think a lot of these may surprise you, so stay tuned, let's begin. Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Hume, and I'm a chiropractor currently based in the Oxfordshire area and in this video I want to talk about cold exposure. The cold exposure is something that it was popularized mainly by Wim Hof who's been uh, who's an insane character and I'll actually put a link to his channel uh, in the description but he's done crazy stuff such as putting himself in ice for 80 minutes, 8-0, without his core temperature dropping. Uh, he's done many things that have stunned scientists. But one of the things he's, he's made more popular is exposing ourselves to the cold. So what are we doing when we, when we do that? Well, basically we're putting ourselves into a controlled temporary state of stress. When we put ourselves in that situation, in a situation where if we stay there long enough, we would die, the body starts to really kick in gear and it has to uh, try and keep you warm and try and keep you alive. So by doing this, we can actually reap some benefits because one of the things that stunts our growth as humans, I believe, is keeping ourselves comfortable. So I started this around three weeks ago. And when I first started, it was very difficult. I started with the cold shower. I had it on hot and I gradually turned the temperature down until I got to a point where it was really cold. When it was really cold, then I had to just stay there because if I moved or the water kind of uh, rubbed against me and, 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 it, and it changed, then uh, it would be even colder. So I kind of stood in a, in a frozen uh, position for a couple of minutes and then I turned it off. That was my first experience. And initially, I really had to work to get my breath under control. But after about 10 to 15 seconds, your body starts to, to relax and you get used to it. And I found that actually I was surprised how quickly I was able to get used to the shock. The shock I found hasn't decreased over the last three weeks necessarily, but mentally I'm more prepared for it. And it's now, I know what to expect. And so I can take the shock really easily to now I've got to a point where I can walk straight in to the cold shower. And I still feel that shock, but it's not really as much of a big deal as it was previously. So you still have that stress, but I'm able to deal with it mentally much better. And I think this is a great lesson for us for making ourselves uncomfortable because we know that if we make ourselves uncomfortable in different aspects of our life, it's usually the best way of growing. And so this is one of the benefits of taking a cold shower. Now, some of the benefits that I found just doing it for three weeks is firstly the initial benefit of getting out now, at the moment, I will admit it's very hot. It's, it's in the 20s uh, for the last few weeks. So actually, I think it is an easier time to do it and it's a good time to start getting used to it. I'm gonna hopefully continue. And when I get into the winter, that's really when it's gonna challenge me. But I would have gradually got myself there, which I think is the best way of doing it. But even still, when I get out, you have this warm, relaxed sensation you generally feel really good and i'll explain why that is the case as i go through the benefits in a minute and i've also seen that inflammation in my body i think has reduced uh, which is obviously hard to tell but i did have an issue with my toe just before doing it and i have found it improve um, really nicely as i've um, done these quite regularly 
So that's been really good. And I've done it after going to the gym as well. And I haven't really had too much soreness the next day. These are things that are a little bit hard to tell, particularly in the short term. And as I keep on doing it, I'm sure I'll start to see more effects. But there are some significant benefits to doing cold exposure that have been proven by science. And so I'm going to go through the top six that I could find and hopefully six reasons why you should start too if you're at all interested. I would definitely recommend it. So number one is that it boosts the immune system. So exposing ourselves to the cold on a regular basis increases our immune cells, which has been shown. And there was a study where they looked at comparing two groups of people for 30 days. Half the group took cold showers and the other half took hot showers. And they looked at the amount of days that they took off work due to sickness and they found that there was a 29% reduction in the group doing cold showers. Now obviously this is an only an association study, but what it, what it shows is that it suggests that by taking cold showers, we can actually reduce the amount of days that we are sick. Cold exposure also promotes something called autophagy. Autophagy is a type of cell death that occurs in the body. And, and autophagy happens also in fasting, which is also a really a beneficial thing for us to do. Now, what happens in autophagy is that the old broken down proteins in your body become recycled and repaired which means that basically it's a time for our body to start fixing itself and to repair itself. So a really important process to occur and the cold exposure is something that actually promotes this process. Number two is that it increases your brown fat. And you might be thinking, what the hell is that and why does that matter? Well, this is actually one of the most significant benefits of cold exposure. So you have generally two types of fats you have your brown fat and you have your white fat. The white fat in your body nowadays is the more common version and that is basically your storage fat. So when we eat more than we need, the body stores it back. So if we need any more energy, it's got it there in reserve. And often that's the type of fat that we see if we have a big stomach and that type of thing. Brown fat on the contrast is filled with mitochondria, which is basically your energy supply, which gives it its brown color. And what's different about brown fat is that it helps to regulate our temperature so it helps to keep us warm when we're in the cold and it helps to cool us down when we're in the hot because it's filled with so much mitochondria so energy it can produce much more energy so that when we are in the cold it produces energy from the inside from the fat to keep us warm and by doing that it actually increases our metabolism and helps us burn energy, which then will then help you to lose weight. One of the ways it produces energy is that it actually burns the white fat as well as the sugar that's in your blood. So it can actually help to reduce diabetes by reducing the amount of sugar in your blood and thus reducing the amount of insulin you need, thus reducing insulin sensitivity. And so that leads me then on to number three, which is it increases your metabolism, which could therefore in theory, help you to lose weight. Because if you're increasing your metabolism, you're able to burn your fuel faster, which then can help you then to lose weight. And also you're burning that white fat. Number four is that it can help to reduce diabetes and obesity. And for the reasons that I already mentioned, it's because it increases that metabolism. It helps reduce the sugars in your blood, which helps with the diabetes. It helps to burn the white fat, which helps with the obesity, but also can help to reduce certain amino acids which have been linked with obesity. Number five is that it can help to boost your recovery for if you've been to the gym or you've exercised, for example. So the theory is, is that as you get really cold, all the blood goes away from your extremities, which is why you often can get cold hands or cold feet. It goes to our vital organs and by going to, that, to the vital organs, it can help the blood replenish with oxygen and with nutrients and as it comes back, and it helps to fuel the, the other areas of your body, such as your muscles and, and your joints. But it can also help to reduce inflammation, which can also help aid your recovery if you have produced a little bit of inflammation through exercising in your joints or in your muscles. So therefore then help helping with your recovery. And number six, finally, is that it can help boost your mental health. 
So one of the things I mentioned earlier is that by putting yourself in an uncomfortable situation can help to improve your ability to be able to do that in other areas of your life. So not only do you get the, the physical benefits that I've gone through here, but it helps you to be able to put yourself in uncomfortable situations that help you to grow as a person. On top of this, it has also been shown that just 11 minutes of exposure to cold can increase your dopamine by two and a half times for a good few hours afterwards. This is why often when you get out of doing a cold plunge, you can actually feel better and you can feel really great afterwards. And that's because primarily because of that increase in dopamine that occurs after taking the plunge or a cold shower. One study has also shown how the adaptive cold shower has been a potential treatment for depression. So it's actually shown to, to lower symptoms of depression. So it says here that the following evidence appears to support the hypothesis that the exposure to cold is known to activate the sympathetic nervous system and increase blood level of beta endorphin and noradrenaline and to increase synaptic release of noradrenaline in the brain as well. And additionally, due to the high density of cold receptors in the skin, a cold shower is expected to send an overwhelming amount of electrical impulses from the peripheral nervous system, so the nerves just outside the brain, to the brain, which could result in antidepressive effects. So it's basically saying that it, it can light up and, and stimulate that nervous system which can be really helpful for decreasing depressive symptoms. So how long therefore should you expose yourself to the cold? Well, this very much depends on you and I would always suggest build up your tolerance and do this slowly. Firstly, don't go in super cold water to start with, go in water that you can cope with and start with just as long as you need. It might only be 30 seconds or 60 seconds, probably no more than a few minutes on your first go and then slowly you can start to ramp up the cold intensity and the duration which you stay in for. You have to be careful if you've got any conditions and if you're not sure whether this is gonna um, be harmful to you, then do inform your doctor. So just be careful. It is a stressful condition for your body. You need to be able to take it to begin with. And over time, you should be able to build your tolerance to get to a really cold plunge and be able to stay in there for you know, a good amount of time. If you want more information on this, one of the best uh, podcasts I watched or listened to in regards to cold exposure is Dr. Rangan's podcast. And he has on there a guest called Dr. Susanna. I'll put a link to that podcast below. And this doctor has been doing lots of research in the last few years on cold exposure. And she has some really good tips and advice if you want to actually get into it. So I would highly suggest that you watch this as they, they unpack the, the benefits in more detail than I've gone through in this video. So give that a watch if you're interested. I hope that's been interesting and I, I hope that gives a bit of insight into the cold exposure and why I've started to do it. If you've got any questions as normal, put them down in the comments. And if you are new here and you like this type of content, I provide content to help people to optimize their health. And if that is you, if you're somebody that wants to optimize your health, I will invite you to subscribe to this channel. And you can also hit that notification bell just so you know when my videos are about to come out. You can be the first ones to watch it. And I will um, yeah, lo love to welcome you to my, to my channel. Otherwise, I will see you on my next video. Take care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.